Okay, hello everyone. Good afternoon. Uh, I'm Jihye Choi from Korea, and I'd like to thank everyone for participating in today's presentation despite your busy schedules. Uh, I am uh, uh, working at Samsung SDS as an infra. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, I am. Uh, I have been working at Samsung SDS as an infra architect for. Uh, about seven years, and as a cloud architect for the recent three years, having particular uh, uh, interest in uh, open source, uh, including Kubernetes and Kubeflow. And I'm also proceeding with uh, various POC uh, to develop the best machine learning platform, uh, focusing on the components like network, server, and uh, GPU, and applied it to service uh, based on my uh, experiences as an infra architect. Uh, my team is currently de developing a machine learning platform, uh, which is based on Kubeflow. And uh, at the beginning of this year, we added on the functions uh, that uh, for enhancing the usability to Kubeflow, uh, which is on Samsung SDS cloud platform and release a Kubeflow service, uh, which is consistently being updated. Uh, uh, for those who are not familiar with SCP, Samsung Cloud Platform is a cloud environment launched by Samsung SDS in July last year, uh, which virtualizes and provides various components like computing, storage, and database uh, that are necessary for uh, corporations. Corporate uh, cloud can be uh, used conveniently as a self-service and it provides uh, very uh, high quality availability and stability. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, my team developed a uh, Kubeflow service on this SSP. Uh, through our experience of uh, developing a machine learning platform, we've learned a lot. I assume that those from the field of machine learning, AI, and ML ops would agree with me on this. The biggest lesson that we learned uh, the, on the limit, limited cost and how important it was to utilize the GPU within that cost. So uh, I'd like to introduce uh, two case studies on how we improved, <laughs> improved that part and applied it to our platform service. Yes, uh, first of all, for those who are not familiar with Kubeflow, it is a machine learning uh, toolkit based on Kubernetes and it's an open, open source uh, project that, that enables simple scaling of machine, machine learning uh, model and deployment to production. Kubeflow provides various uh, components like Jupyter Notebook, Captiv, uh, pipelines, and uh, training operators that allowing data scientists and um, uh, machine learning engineers to work on machine learning training, uh, hyperparameter tuning, and serving workflow. However, the components that uh, process uh, process effective distributed training by combining with a GPU ecosystem or maximize the GPU utilization rate are rarely provided. So we proceeded with the POC uh, based on two GPU uh, technologies. One is multi-instance GPU provided by uh, NVIDIA Ampere architecture, and the other one is uh, GPU Direct RDMA. I'm gonna share the POC result for each of them today. Uh, let's first take a look at a POC on MIG. With these two tables, we can compare the specification of GPU for data centers and for desktops used for uh, experts. As you can see from the table on the left, uh, the GPU for data centers and servers for used for uh, AI and HPC has large resource and a processing capacity. It is well suited for huge volume training. Then let's look at the specification of desktop GPU for expert. Its memory size at uh, four to eight gigabytes at the minimum, and its specification is about a half or one 
120th of a GPU for data centers. This means that it, uh, it is relatively less uh, GPU resources is needed for uh, light model development or inference task. In other words, using one unit of GPU for data centers in AI development or inference tasks is a waste of uh, resources. Uh, Multi-instance GPU is a technology that came out to, uh, to tackle this issue. MI can uh, split one unit of GPU uh, up to seven instances, and each instance can be used for one complete GPU. MI can uh, partition GPU into uh, uh, instances that each has a high bandwidth memory, cache, and comparing core. Uh, when uh, various tasks like uh, uh, different AI inference or uh, Jupyter jobs, Jupyter jobs or training uh, jobs is uh, executed in the same GPU without MIG, then each task uh, competes uh, each other, each other uh, for the same resource. Uh, on the other hand, with MIG, all the tasks are executed simultaneously in different instances, uh, securing for a serv service quality and in ex <laughs> extending the scope of a computer accelerated computing resource to all the users. MI was uh, particularly fascinating for us who handled the largest scale of GPU for uh, data centers. And we thought that uh, we can enhance the uh, machine learning efficiency by combining it uh, with Kubeflow. So we proceeded with, proceeded with uh, uh, technology verification. Since Kubeflow is not a platform uh, that is simply loaded on operating system layer, so we had to verify it in bare metal, uh, uh, hypervisor, virtual machine, operating system, Kubernetes, and Kubeflow consecutively uh, uh, through numerous phases. And uh, our biggest interest was in the procedure of each phase and, uh, and um, the most efficient way in terms of performance. So, oh, I'm sorry, oops. I'm sorry. Mm, so, I, oh, I want to list, uh, list every step how to set the MIG on uh, today's presentation, but uh, however, let's rather uh, focus on the lessons that we, we learned. Uh, first, would it work well on Kubeflow? The official document thoroughly explains uh, up to Kubernetes layer and the tests on the operating system layer and Kubernetes layer were done without any issue. However, uh, we, had to, uh, we had to take a step further, a step further to check up the Kubeflow layer. And to sum up, it works very well as you might have expected. This screen shows a uh, Jupyter Notebook test screen that is created on Kubeflow. Uh, the screen on the left uh, shows the GPU confirmation command executed within Jupyter Notebook. And we can see the information of the 40 gigabyte size A100 GPU and one MI device of GI ID9 that has been allocated. On the right is a screen that shows GPU information of the node where notebook is loaded. One unit of a 100 GPU is divided into seven MI device, devices, and the process is allocated uh, to the device GI ID9. As we track the process, we can see that is the Jupyter notebook uh, on the middle. So we executed simple MNIST training on Jupyter Notebook. And as you can see, it works very well with MI's device. Yeah. However, uh, we faced a minor issue during this testing. When Jupyter Notebook is created, the MI's device 
is not detected on uh, open source QFRO dashboard. So let's take a closer look at this. The left is the screen for open source QFRO. When Jupyter Note 2 is uh, created, then a CPU, memory, and the GPU resource can be selected. But in GPU, only the quantity can be selected. The uh, MI's device uh, cannot be detected. So we had to update the notebook YAML file manually for testing. And uh, thinking that it will be very inconvenient for developers who uh, are unfamiliar with the Kubernetes. So that was the reason why we enhanced this part on our platform. On the right is the screen for creating notebook of STP Kubeflow service. As you can see, we can select the GPU type. type. Uh, as of now, we can see 10 gigabyte sized MI's device and GPU type support. It is a set for users to select instantly on the dashboard without updating YAML file. And it would be appreciated if such MI's device uh, function is applied to open source community later. Then let's uh, uh, move over on SSP QFLO service for utilizing resource, including MI's device. It can be checked on the dashboard. MI's device information of the node com configured in the cluster can, can be checked and the resource use amount can be reported and the allocate allocation of resource quota can be restricted. And I think it's gonna be very useful. Then mm, let's move on to the next lesson that we learned. Uh, we wanted to check whether the distributed training was visible on MI's device. Although MI's technology is not suitable for large volume of uh, uh, tasks like distributed training, but we just wanted to check its possibility. Uh, for those of you who are not familiar with uh, uh, the concept of distributed training, uh, it involves one training job uh, uh, that uses numerous GPUs uh, that, uh, to ex execute uh, training. It can be executed in a one node or multi-nodes like the one in the uh, picture. Uh, we are going to test this DDP job in PyTorch using an outstanding technology called CUDA specialized for uh, NVIDIA GPU. For task execution, device is allocated using CUDA command in, uh, in the device. Let's look at a specific example. On the left is the distributed training YAML allocating four GPUs to one path and running total of two paths. As you can see on the right, by executing it, then the all the processes are allocated in the one node. And if we look at the executed law, then we can see that CUDA device has been allocated properly and the task has been completed. This is the DDP that generally takes place in GPU. Then let's allocate the same task with MI's device only. It is the distributed training YAML that runs total of two paths by allocating uh, two MI's devices for each path. As you can see on the right, an error occurs in runtime of QDA device detection. Then, does this mean that distributed training is not feasible on MIG? Uh, for accurate, accurate verification, we allocated one MI device for each part for the same task. As you can see on the right now, uh, MI device was allocated properly and distributed training was uh, executed without any issue. We found out that distributed training is feasible with MI's device, but the task is executable when only one device is allocated for each part. Then uh, lastly, let's take a look at the performance. To sum up, for lighter motors, it was three to seven uh, times more efficient on MI's device. 
we executed model training in both bare metal and virtual machine environment. We compared the execution time for the method that executes the, executes the same model consecutively seven times in, the, in one GPU and the method that executes simultaneously on seven MI devices. We saw three times better performance for heavier models like RNN and five to seven times better performance on light, lighter models like CNN and uh, ResNet 18. We found this uh, valuable enough to apply to our SSP Flow service. Uh, furthermore, we found some points to consider for Kubernetes world testing. And if you are interested in it, then you can take a look at the document which we have written in SSP Q, uh, technology guide. So, uh -huh. so far, we went over the POC related to MI technology with which GPU is divided into seven instances at max and efficient use of GPU is possible even for only one unit of GPU for numerous users or on uh, CUDA applications by using MIG. However, it is suitable for data scientist model development, developing task or inference task and not for large scale tasks like distributed training. And it allows more efficient use of GPU resources if utilized well. Then let's move on to the second case study. Uh, I'd like to introduce POC re related to GPU direct RDMA technology. As the size of the model gets bigger and the amount of the data is increased to enhance uh, uh, the accuracy of deep learning, we need countless computers and uh, efficient distributed processing. I'm going to explain GPU direct RDMA technology for multi node uh, GPU uh, distributed training and uh, system architecture, as well as some uh, examples, and share the performance verification result. First of all, uh, GPU R direct RDME is a function that allows direct access to, uh, to GPU memory between GPU, uh, GPU uh, for GPU communication uh, between remote nodes and uh, through the network interface uh, data I.O. between GPU, mem uh, GPU memories uh, is processed uh, without involving CPU. To understand it better, the, uh, let's take a look at four cases. The two diagrams at the top uh, show the uh, different GPUs communicating within in a single node, and the, the other two at the bottom shows the communication between GPUs of the remote node. First, let's take a look at the con communication of GPU within in a single load. Uh, we, without uh, GPU direct peer-to-peer, -peer, the host CPU uh, must transfer the data from the GPU memory to the host memory, and then uh, from the host memory to the, uh, the other uh, second GPU's memory. But uh, with GPU direct peer-to-peer, -peer, the data can be transferred for directly from uh, GPU memory to other, uh, GPU, the other uh, GPU's memory. Uh, it works similarly to, uh, for internal communication as well. With GPU, without GPU direct RDMA, then the data must, uh, must, must be must be copied from the GPU memory to the host memory, uh, host memory, and then from the host memory to a remote host. But uh, with GPU direct RDMA, the data is uh, transferred directly from the GPU memory. Uh, uh, it is sent via RDMA network adapter like InfiniBand to the remote host with no CPU environment. It seems that the communication will be done more quickly without CPU environment. So, then what do we need to use GPU direct RDMA? 
various environmental setting is necessary for uh, GPU direct RDMA, uh, applying GPU direct RDMA to Kubeflow. For hardware, we need network equipment that supports RDMA communication. And for our POC, we've set bare metal environment and with InfiniBand network adapter and NVIDIA A100 GPU. In order to detect GPU and network adapter, driver and turkey setting is necessary for operating, operating system layer and Kubernetes system layer. The parts in light green are the modules for using GPU, and those in dark blue, uh, blue are in, uh, the modules for using a network adapter. Let's first look at OS layer. We have to set four things displayed in the uh, in diagram. When NVIDIA driver is installed to uh, have GPU recognize and OS and on OS and the NVIDIA container toolkit is set uh, to be run on Kubernetes, then it is possible to use GPU. After installing all fade driver to have InfiniBand network adapter recognized and installing MVPMM driver that supports RDMA communication, then setting of OS layer, layer is completed. When the setting for OS uh, layer is done, then let's uh, take a look at Kubernetes layer. As you can see, we have to set NVIDIA device plugin and RDMA shared device to, uh, to Kubernetes layer. NVIDIA device plugin is a demo set that automatically recognizes and runs GPU in Kubernetes layer. It is mandatory for using GPU in Kubernetes. If RDMA shares a device that allows access between pods uh, by sharing the RDMA device, RDMA device uh, between the remote uh, Kubernetes nodes, then we are ready to use GPU direct RDMA in Kubernetes layer. The part in yellow is the container image layer. And we used CUDA, CUDNN, and Nickel for our POC. Then all the preparation is completed to use GPU Direct RDMA. Let's take a look at uh, the sample that we tested. It is a YAML that executes uh, distributed training on image segmentation model using training operator PyTorch job embedded in Kubeflow. We set the part in red rectangle to use GPU Direct RDMA. First, setting up two OS, OS environment variables in container image is necessary. One variable is for nickel communication using InfiniBand, and the other is for GPU direct RDMA level. Then, after we designate RDMA shared device, which is uh, the custom resource set in Kubernetes layer in previous in, in advance. Then set the security contact for IP lock. Then we can proceed with the test we want. Let's look at the log that has actually been executed. The OS, OS environment variable is set, uh, ex, ex, has been actually, uh, <laughs> sorry, is set properly, and we can see the uh, a100 GPU. And InfiniBand is set uh, to zero. This means that Infinity is not in disabled. In other words, we use InfiniBand. Using GPU Direct RDMA, we can see a nickel log, uh, nickel log where training takes place. How effective would they be? Then let's see. This is on throughput measured by uh, increasing the number of GPUs uh, for image classification, detection, and segmentation model, and natural language understanding model in our POC environment. We increased the number of GPU from 1 to 2, 4, 8, 6, and 16, and used, for, uh, used a total of 16 GPUs for the red rectangle. 
and it is the comparison of performance results between the green bar that uses GPU direct RDMA and the blue bar that does not. It differs more by more, but generally, we can expect the effect to be around 114 to 612 uh, Basically, as the number of GPU increases, uh, the performance improves. But in some model, the performance of multi nodes may be undermined if a huge value of parameter communication uh, con continuously takes place in the model. But by using GPU Direct RDMA, it can communicate more if, uh, effectively. As we saw the, the performance verification result, we achieved uh, extremely satisfying the result. And by applying this, uh, we released InfiniBand based uh, multi node GPU service on SSP last month. Mm-hmm. And yes, uh, yes, that's it. I think this is all I share, uh, all, I, all I wanted to share today. Uh, the presentation was based on the uh, cases from our experience, and although it was a brief explanation completed in about uh, thirty minutes due to the time limit, but uh, I want to mention I want to mention that we have gone through a countless trial and error. Uh, many of you working in this field uh, may be or will be going through the same difficulties, so I hope you find my presentation a little bit uh, helpful. And uh, I'd like to finish today's uh, presentation. So uh, thank you for your time and attention and stay uh, uh, and have a safe trip. And thank you. Thank you. Also, you can uh, uh, and also you can download the, the this presentation at the schedule.com. And any question? <laughs> okay. Uh, yes, uh, actually, we, uh, pr we uh, proceeded with the POC uh, based on Docker, but uh, basically our SSP, uh, SSP uh, Kubernetes service is based on ContainerD, so we basically uh, uh, processed with the ContainerD base too. Okay, so one of your slides noted that you use Docker. Yes, it's, it's based on Docker, Docker you did, wizard. Did you with oh, yes. And Thank you. Thank you. In one of your first slides, it looked like you were having trouble on Kubeflow recognizing the MIGs. Mm -hmm. And then you mentioned that you had to apply changes, but I wasn't clear if the changes in the YAML file were only applied to the Samsung SCP service or if it was something that got... Um, committed back to Kubeflow. I'm sorry, could you take off your mask and then please speak again? Earlier, you had trouble having Kubeflow recognize your MIGs, your GPU MIGs. Mm -hmm. You mentioned that you had to apply changes to some YAML files so mm -hmm. that Kubeflow could see your MIGs. Mm -hmm. But I wasn't sure it it wasn't clear if those changes were applied to the Samsung SCP platform or if they were committed back to Kubeflow. Actually, we, uh, we uh, applied it to our SCP Kubeflow service. Okay. <laughs> so does that mean then that Kubeflow may still have trouble oh, yes, identifying that's, that's right. MIGs? That's right. Thank you. Any other questions? <laughs> oh, okay. When you, when you were doing your distributed testing with MIG, right, you, you're using MIG instances to run distributed with a single MIG instance in each container. Uh, what was the interconnect? Was it just using Ethernet as the interconnect because of the lack of GPU direct 
when you're using MIG? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Could, could you take off your mask, please? Yeah. I'm sorry. Uh, one of the first tests you were running was uh, distributed training in MIG, right? You did it with uh, two MIG instances per container and it failed, but with a single MIG instance per container, it worked. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. What was the interconnect? Actually, uh, <laughs> it is the NVIDIA Ampere, it is based on um, uh, NVIDIA Nickel? Ampere architecture, so they, they uh, designed uh, with... Uh, <laughs> so it, I'm guessing it wasn't using InfiniBand, it was falling back to Ethernet in those cases? Internet? On Internet? You mean? Inter interconnect, like the, for the distributed communications? Uh, it is with uh, InfiniBand network. It was using InfiniBand with a single MIG instance? No, actually, uh, InfiniBand is for the remote nodes uh, in internet. So, internet is, doesn't need any uh, InfiniBand network adapter. It is uh, uh, communicate uh, within the uh, MV switch in the single node. So, that does not need any InfiniBand in a single node. It, in a, when, when you're doing the distributed test with single MIG instances, right? Uh huh. Yeah. It is, uh, so, so you were not requesting uh, RDMA HCA for those pods? Mm-hmm. Or? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. <All> right. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> if you have any question, then you can also email me. <laughs> then I will answer that. <laughs> I'm very sorry. <laughs> any other questions? <laughs> okay. Then uh, I think that that's it. Uh, thank you for your time again. Thank you.